You like that? You like the Munster? I Burr. love it. Burr. <laughs> <laughs> We're uh, we're live here talking to Munster podcast with the one and only Ollie Richardson, the real deal Richardson. Stoked to be here, Casey. Thanks for having me on. <laughs> this is gonna be fun, dude. It's super fun. You get the headphones on and the mic, and it just kind of makes you want to go. Blah. It's just blah, 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 blah. Yeah, I I wrote down twenty questions. And I don't read off of them. I just kind of, that's how I prepare myself. I, I write 20 questions down. It gets me thinking about it. Perfect. And it's enough where I have to think, you know, once I get to 10, I'm like, oh, now what? Yeah, oh, what? Well, sometimes I feel like I wear about 20 different hats in the community. So I, I understand your 20 questions. Yeah, you do a lot. Somebody actually <clears throat> earlier, they were like, oh, who, who is your guy tonight? And I'm like, it's Ollie Richardson. And they're like, so what about him? And I'm like, uh, well, he surfs. Um, and he's a teacher. I mean, it's like, it's hard to, for me to explain you because you do so many things. And a lot of them, I don't even know, like, because you're always, you might it. learn something tonight, but you never know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I usually, I usually learn surfing from you though, too. When we're out in the water, if you say something, I, I perk up, you know, I, I don't know everything. I, when I learned to surf, I remember going out in the water 10 times and I still didn't know how to surf. I should have taken a, less, a lesson. And then I had Speakman, my buddy Speakman out there, yep. like finally got a tip from him. And then, you know, which was to paddle a little er, you know, early before the wave came. <laughs> so I had a head start. <laughs> you got to get your momentum up. <laughs> and then I saw you uh, teaching a lesson at Aussies. And because uh, you're like the face of Aussies, right? Is that what you consider yourself? Yeah. You know, the, the funniest story about that is people that know me pretty well. Most people think I'm the owner of Aussies. They're like, Hey, how's your shop doing? And I've gotten to the point now over the last 18 years, I'm just like, that's eh, going good, man. <laughs> I don't want to sit there and explain to them that I don't actually own it. <laughs> yeah. I just realized I got to share this. Yeah. You don't own Aussies, but and I, I tried to call Dan earlier too. I was like, Oh Dan, should I share this on Aussies? I probably should. Shouldn't I? <laughs> yeah, you probably should. I'll share it on Aussies. <clears throat> but the, the funny story that I always tell Dan sometimes when he gets, when he gets a little short with me or he starts being grumpy, I just threaten them with uh, coming in at midnight and spray painting two L's over the S's on the shop signs, and then it will be Ollie's Surf Shop in the morning. <laughs> oh, I didn't even think of that. Ollie's Surf Shop, dude. That would be the funniest freaking yeah. stunt. I might have to April Fool's it next year. <sighs> uh, yeah, I like that idea. Actually, Dan, uh, I was when I was trying to get a hold of him earlier, this is perfect right here, Ollie Richardson. Oh, I'm publishing it. On and I've Aussies. never searched it, but there's probably an Ollie's Surf Shop somewhere because Ollie and surfing is kind of like goes together just because it's a skateboard move. and It's the of, skateboard yeah, move. Yeah, it's the skateboard move. Like if you see someone that skateboards, the first thing like, oh, you skateboard? Can you Ollie? <laughs> yeah, that's the first question always. Can, can and you? I'm like, no, no, I can't. You can't. That Ollie. is my name. <laughs> I can barely Ollie. I'm, I've been trying Ollie for six years and I'm barely able to do it now. Like can't do it very good, but I can kind of do it. It's a hard move to do. You have to do yeah. like two or three things at the same time. I'm sure that if you had some good coaching and about three or four hours, you could probably get it down pretty good. It's all practice and consistency. Well, you kind of, you might be right about the coaching thing. It's, uh, okay. Oh, yeah. I try to, you know, like using your phone and on being on the podcast, it's kind of like being on mushrooms. <laughs> if you're like really high on mushrooms, it's really hard to use your phone. <laughs> okay. That's done. Excellent. The real deal. Richardson. So pumped. Uh, I share, I shared this on, um, on the community page too, on Facebook and nice. people were like responding. They're like, so stoked. <laughs> right on. Yeah. I would say it's, you know, I've, I've lived in Newport for 18 years now and, and with all the different things that I do here, I, I can't go anywhere at any time without seeing somebody I know, whether it's a parent, a former student, a current student, a coach, um, someone at the community college, someone from the surfing world, like it just, you know. I'm well known. It's got to be kind of a downer sometimes. Like, I just want to go to the store and get out. <laughs> I want to get in there and leave. Yeah. Sometimes, sometimes it's hard to get in and out when you see people, you know, and they all want to talk, but <laughs> it's all good. I'm not, a, I'm not afraid of having a conversation. You have the best attitude, man. Like I feel like over the last six years, my attitude's actually kind of gone downhill. Like I used to be super, like almost as good as you. And now I'm like, I'm kind of jaded and cynical. 
You know, like I round out my edges and I'm like, oh, those fucking ladies on the <laughs> Yeah. I mean, I think, I think everyone goes, has their ups and downs throughout their lives. And you know what I've noticed as I get older, like things continue to change and evolve and, and you know, nothing's consistent, but I'm definitely an optimist. Uh, the glass is half full and I always try to look on the bright side and believe that everything happens for a reason, whether it be good or bad. And there's always uh, there's always something to learn from that experience. So, yeah. But it's hard in the moment sometimes when things aren't going very well. <laughs> yeah, well, life is hard. Well, you you've been going through a transition too lately. Like yeah. you were you've been how long were you a teacher for at the Newport? Uh, so yeah, high I just I just finished my 18th year at Newport High School, and Dang. you know I got my dream job right out of college. Um, just very fortunate to to live on the Oregon coast. It's what I've always wanted to do, and I you know I grew up in Coos Bay, but. I just, I love, I love it here. Um, I love the community and everything it has to offer. And it's just such a, such a great place. I really, you know, the thing that I love about, you know, really you can go all the way down to Yahats and all the way up to Lincoln city, but Lincoln County, like everything is on the beach. Everything is beach access everywhere. And you look at the plates around here in the summertime in Idaho, Montana, Canada, Washington, Colorado, you can go up and down, you know, especially all the Northwest States, but Man, there's people that come here to spend their week vacation at the beach every year um, somewhere in Lincoln County. And it's a really popular place because we have what, you know, no other place in Oregon has, which we have the biggest attraction there is. It's called the beach and the ocean. Like it's always there and there's no admission. There's no admission fee. It's free. And all you have to do is show up and enjoy it for whatever you want to whatever you want to use it for. It's a pretty cool thing. Yeah. And that's kind of funny because I was just talking to <clears throat> I have a friend from uh boston massachusetts and she had her family come in and uh we cracked a beer open at this campsite and we were talking about drinking beer at the beach or something they're like oh yeah you can't do that uh, down in southern cal or you can't do that over over in uh new jersey or wherever like you can't, you can't drink, drink beer be on the beach no it's no they crack no they crack down on it like you can't just like go to the beach with a six-pack and not get wasted and just have a beer <laughs> I know. Isn't that weird? Huh, that's yeah. like, so maybe that's why they come here too. They, they can chill out on the beach and actually relax. And yeah, that's, I just learned something new. I didn't know that was a thing. <laughs> I learned that two days ago. So okay. yeah, pass it on. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, but gosh, well, I was, I was going to ask this other thing and I totally forgot now. It'll come back to you. Yeah. Oh yeah. You're transitioning to, uh, to what now? Tell us, tell us about your new thing. Um, yeah, so I, I picked up a, a new job. Um, I'm working for the Oregon Boating Foundation, and I'm the executive director. And um, you know, I'm I'm literally a week a week into it. Um, there's a lot to learn. I got a lot of catching up to do. And um, but there's a lot of <clears throat> lot of similarities with what I've been doing with doing surf lessons for the last 18 years. Um, just with regards to the process of of teaching someone how to do something here locally that everybody can experience and how to do it safely. Um, and also, you know, how to, how to take care of the gear and, and things that, um, other people might not think about when they just be like, Oh, I want to go surf or I want to go kayak or I want to go sailing. But you know, it's more than just that. So, you know, the, the safety involved and all the gear and the equipment needed and how to take care of that equipment. So it lasts a long time. Um, so it's been, it's been a great, great, uh, adventure for me so far. And, and like I said, I got a lot to learn, but I'm really excited about the opportunity to, to do, do something different. Um, you know, it's, it's, uh, I've had a great time teaching for the last 18 years and, and it's been awesome. And so it's going to be nice just to change it up and, uh, see what happens. <laughs> Are you going to be doing uh, cause I talked to Brian and you're working pretty close with Brian. Right yes. Now? Yes. Yeah. He is like the coolest, like chillest dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, he, uh, he's, he's, he, he is along with, uh, Tom Murphy and some other people, he's really built a great program that, you know, I'm the thing that's awesome is I'm, I'm coming into something that's like, everything is established, everything, the gears there, the protocols are there. We've got some great kayak instructors this year. Um, and like the foundation to have a great program is all there. I don't, it's not like I'm trying to come in and create something that, that needs to happen right away, which is kind of nice to be able to just learn, learn everything about it that I can and, and how it works. And then I can look at it from, from a different perspective and be like, how could we make this even better? Yeah. So, but right now I'm just learning about like, how do we, how do we do this and keep this going right now? And then I can, I can look at how to make that better. Uh, once I get a handle on everything. <clears throat> yeah. So you're, you're going to be like writing grants, aren't you? 
Like, yep. Like yep. grant writing and looking with, for money. That's yeah, going to be kind of a new, is that something that you, you've done a lot or you're kind of stoked about or? I mean, I definitely have not done a lot of that. I've definitely written some grants throughout my 18 years as a teacher to get some grants for my classroom and get some new equipment, even when I was teaching video production and oh yeah, um, and getting PE equipment. You know, I've I've done a few grant grants through our local Celeste Tribe, um, which is a, a huge huge giver to our community, especially. Um, and I've done a few other smaller grants, but I think like you know the 10 to 15, 20 page grants that sometimes are written. I've never I've never really gone beyond. You know, the five pagers that um, are pretty small, I think, in, in the amount of money you get and also the amount of work it takes to get them. So do you think that people actually actually read through those 15? Page? <laughs> I mean, maybe you don't need to write those. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I'm it, writing grants is going to be something that I'll have to I'll have to get better at for sure, because um, I, I know a lot of them. You know, it's just like when you're applying for scholarships to go to school. I mean, there's there's certain certain points that you have to hit and that you got to meet. Yeah. And whether it's a deadline or whether it's a specific group that um, you're trying to trying to get this for, you know, so there's a lot of little boxes you got to check along the way and you got to yeah. make sure your grant is written um, with regards to what they're asking you for. Okay. And, and are you actually providing this service? Um, so. So yeah, I mean yeah. The, the Oregon Boating Foundation is definitely a grant run program that uh, that requires a lot of work in the off season to to continue to keep it at the yeah. level that it's at. Well, I feel like if anybody's going to be able to get money for that, it'd be you. You'd be like, you'd be the <laughs> one that'd be like, dude, they need this. They need these boats. We need to keep this open. We need people out here staying active. Yeah, you know. Yeah, well, I you know I feel like it's it's definitely something. There's there's I, I'm already looking at different things. Like I've already had a, a teacher. Um, that actually teaches in Philomath who came for a tour and she's like, Oh man, how can I bring my kids here next year? Like, you know, I want to take them on a tour. Um, you know, and it's, it's kind of similar to what I've actually done in my Oregon outdoors class at Newport high school, where I actually, I teach kids how to kayak and how to sup board. And we do a, a Beaver Creek tour, um, in my class. And, and, you know, we kind of expose them to that and, and some kids love it. And some kids are like, Oh, that was fun, but I don't want to do that again. But, you know, it's one of those things, if you never try it and experience it and go through it, you'll never know. So you can't say, oh, I don't like this or I don't like that. Well, have you ever tried it? Because really, you don't know until you try something. Yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> you're, you're so right. I've definitely, I, I, I feel bad saying this about myself, but I, I kind of judge books by their covers, especially movies and activities. Like, oh, I don't want to do that. That's stupid. Like, I saw this movie, though, called The Interview with a Vampire. It's like, oh, that looks dumb. It's just like some guy's face, and it's all like, I don't know. It looks really dumb, but it's like, it's an awesome vampire movie. You feel like vampires, <laughs> you know, Brad Pitt, Tom Cruise, and, yeah. you know. Well, and sometimes all it takes is a certain actor or actress and be like, oh, I want to see that movie because oh, yeah. one of your favorite favorite people you like to watch is yeah. in there, so. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but. So you, uh, I wanted to talk, I want to talk about surfing too, but like, I don't want to. You know, it could just take over the whole podcast. I feel like easy. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, one of the one of the really cool things that um, that I love about the Oregon Boating Foundation and coming into this is, you know, their their whole mission and goal is to just, um, you know, get you out on the water safely. Number one, and then remove any barriers to make sure that it's affordable for anyone that would like to do it. And um, how, do, how do they do that? What well, so, so one of the things they do is, so if you wanted to sign up for a kayak tour, so the tours run Tuesday through Sunday yeah, and, um, you know, so this is something that I've already done a couple of, cause it's like, I need to know what our guides are doing and what, what we're offering. So yeah. I've got, I've, I've gone on a few of the tours when we are training all of our kayak guides and, um, we leave right from port dock seven, right down, you know, right in the, where all the fishing boats are and everything else. And we paddle. Um, you know, around the fishing docks out to the seawall and we hug the seawall and then we cut back in where the boardwalk is, where the wooden boardwalk is down on the bayfront. Yeah. And then we kind of come out by the, um, the little small jetty where all the sea lions are kind of yeah. across from Clearwater. Yeah. We'll kind of poke out there and, um, and then like right now the sea lions are gone. So we can actually kind of paddle into that little cove where they're normally on the docks below Clearwater. Yeah. And then we'll paddle all the way out to the Coast Guard station under the bridge and even to the first green buoy if the weather is, um, you know, not too windy oh, and not too fun. dangerous. And when you see everything from the water, like you could walk the bayfront a thousand times. Yeah. And you go on one kayak tour and you will see things 
and from different angles and on the water level, you know, you never know what you're going to see with wildlife. Yeah. Um, and just looking up at everything and looking up at the buildings and seeing how all those buildings on the Bayfront are supported by all the, all the pilings underneath and just seeing it from water level is just a complete different perspective. Oh, even that's even lower than a boat. You're like yeah. all the way down. Yeah. Cause you're basically sitting on the water. Yeah. You know, your head is a couple feet off above the water and it's just, it's just really cool. It's just a great way to see it. And, um, you know, whether it's windy or calm or anything, it's just, it's a really fun, exciting experience. And, and it's one of those things, just like when you go in the ocean, you don't know what's going to happen. You don't know what you're going to see. And, and you we know, just had orcas kind of in the bay. Life. Yeah, exactly. You think you would be out there? Did you, that's almost a week ago when you started. I think there might've been. Yeah, I think it was a little before that, but yeah, I mean, theoretically you could see orcas in the bay when you're out paddling. I mean, usually you always see the little harbor seals yeah, or, yeah. or sea lions and all sorts of different kind of birds and whether it's an eagle or an osprey diving down for a fish or, you know, starfish and crabs on that tip of the jetty when you're paddling around and you'll see yeah. eelgrass when you're paddling over and you, you know, depending on the water clarity, if the water's really clear, you can look down yeah. in some of the shallow areas and, you know, you just never know what you're going to see and what you're going to experience out there. So you know, it's almost like each tour is a little different because everyone has a different experience and they see different things. And then you're paddling through and around all the fishing boats. And some of those boats are, I mean, it's a working dock. It's the, you know, the, the cool thing about Newport, I believe, um, if I'm not mistaken, it's, they bring in the most seafood out of any West coast, uh, port in, in Oregon, or even maybe on the whole West coast. Even more than the story, you think? I believe so. Yeah. Cause I, I think they did, they do call us the crab capital. Yeah. So maybe that's, yeah, but we have like the busiest active fishing fleet, um, in, on the West coast and, and it shows, I mean, like, you're paddling by sometimes and you know, when we're on tours, like we're very conscientious of this is a working port and we need yeah. to stay out of their way. Yeah. So we're real cautious and careful and our guides know how to, how to navigate, um, to make sure that we're not interfering with, with them working. Um, and you know, when you paddle by one of those big fishing boats and it's moving, like you're like, Oh my God, that thing's huge. You yeah. Know? Well, Cause you're seeing it right up close. Yeah. Like you don't want to be in the front, in front of that thing. <laughs> so, <laughs> you um, you down. yeah. So, um, you know, it's just, just really cool. So with the, the other, the other big things that, uh, you know, the first one happened this week, but they also run youth camps for, um, ages 10 to 18. Mm -hmm. And so we're finishing up our first one tomorrow. I'm actually going to take three SUP boards out there and we're going to, we're going to get them on some SUP boards tomorrow. Um, there's four kids in the youth camp and they're just having a ball, having a great time. And so we're going to, we're going to introduce them to stand up paddle boarding tomorrow, which is kind of more, um, from my background of what I know, um, it's right up my alley, obviously. So I'm going to be able to teach them some things about that. Um, just to give them another experience about, you know, things that you can do on the water and do safely and have fun. So, um, yeah. And then they also do, uh, kayak classes and they have sailing classes as well that are, that are offered throughout the summer. Um, and, and then, and that's they, in Toledo or is that in, uh, um, no, the, all the Newport. classes, uh, the classes happen out in, um, well, at least the kayaking classes happen out at Alala Lake. They oh, do those out oh. at Alala, but the free family boating, <clears throat> um, is also happens and that's out in Toledo on the waterfront there. And the free family boating is anybody, any age can show up for free, sign the waiver and boom, we'll put you out on a kayak, put you in a rowboat, a sailboat, stand up paddleboard, and you just get to go out right there on the water and that happens every um thursday from 3 to 6 p.m and on sundays from 12 to 4 p.m and you don't need anything just show up and we'll put you on the water oh man it's pretty I'm, cool i'm down so um so yeah bring the family out and uh have have fun because like i said everything it's kind of like you know you think about a lot of different activities but pretty much when you get on a boat or your own boat whether it's a kayak or a big boat like it's just better on the water yeah things are better on the water than they are on land so you get to experience things from a different, different angle and a, and it's a good time. Dude, this sounds like the dream job. You said you had your dream job and now like, <laughs> this sounds pretty freaking awesome now. Like, <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, you know, the, the challenging thing for, for my family, just cause you know, I, as a teacher, you know, I feel like for, for what we do and I love teaching kids and I love coaching. And, you know, I, I, I wouldn't be doing it if I don't. The, the one thing that I definitely feel like I pride myself in is that if I'm not having fun at whatever it is I'm doing, I make a change and I find something different to do. And it's and it's not that I ha wasn't having fun teaching. I just I just needed a break. I just need to be able to hit the reset button and um, and just get 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 back that energy that I that I lost. And, you know, there's just so many different things that have changed with teaching. And you could talk about the covid years and and the cell phones and technology and you know it, you could just go down the list i could give you a dozen things right now that we could talk about for hours 
Um, and they've just all kind of contributed to this change and this shift in education that is just different than it was when I started 18 years ago. Um, and yeah, I just, I just needed to step back from that and really hit the reset button. Yeah. Um, cause it was just, it was affecting me personally more than it should have. Yeah. And, uh, and so I'm excited to be able to do something different to help me, help me get back to where I was. <laughs> so now not necessarily wanting to get into the negatives of the COVID thing, but like when, when COVID first hit and, and school, you know, shut down for, didn't it shut down for a little bit and then it reopened and then you were teaching, but the students weren't in school. Yeah, well, we, we actually were, we were, kids were out of school in Lincoln County for over a full year, the not in person. Yeah. We were teaching online. Okay. But there was no in-person instruction for over 12 months. And you're a PE teacher. Yes. Like, can you, like, can you, (laughs) you told me you went to the beach a couple of times. Like, how did that work exactly? You know, I, I tried to be really creative. Like I remember one day I I took my phone because we were doing Zoom. And so I, you know, and I. I talked to my principal about it. And I was just like, I was, I trying to be creative to get kids excited about going outside and, and getting at, you know, off their phones and doing something physically active because, um, let's just say like me being in the gym at school, teaching them a lesson that I want them to do at home. Like it wasn't happening. <laughs> and, and, you know, I'm looking at a screen of 30 to 40 kids and like every screen, but one or two is just black. No, <laughs> nobody has their cameras on. <laughs> And, and, you know, the funny story is, is when I finally got those kids back to school in person and, you know, I had them as freshmen during COVID and then now they're sophomores and I just, you know, I, I, once I get to know the kids, I'm like, just tell me what you're really doing. Like, it doesn't matter, (laughs) but like, what were you really doing? Like, well, I was sleeping. Every one of them was like, I was sleeping in bed, you know, Uh, they had their cameras off and they were sleeping and I knew that was going uh, on. uh, Cause sometimes I'd end class early and then like there'd be 12 screens still up and I'd be like, Hey Johnny, Johnny, Hey Susie. And I'd just start calling them out by name and none of them would would ever respond. So it was kind of just a, it was like, basically I'd just sit there and talk to myself for 15 minutes and, uh, and I kind of lost my mind a little bit during that time. I'd take a year off too, but yeah, but, but anyway, you know, once, once we got the kids back in person, like it got better. And then Um, I, I noticed another positive shift when, when everyone was able to take their masks off because like kids really were not communicating at school like they normally would in, in, from a, from a, you know, just socializing with each other. And like, it was almost like they, they'd been in this sheltered world for so long that, um, they didn't know how to, it's like, they forgot how to communicate with each other. And so it took some time to build that in and. Um, but it continued to get better and better. And like I said, by the, by the end of this school year, you know, things were somewhat getting back to normal, but you know, it's just, it's just, there's so much uncertainty moving forward with COVID and what's happening and you know, what could or could or could not shut us down again. Or oh, yeah. it's just, you know, yeah. the, it's a, it's a moving target. I would say yeah, it moving. continues, continues to change even, even today as we're doing this. Yeah. But speaking of COVID, so like the one thing that seemed like was almost unaffected by COVID was surfing i never it, saw anybody wear a mask out in the water no you'd be you'd die if you did like you start to ever put a wet towel over your face <laughs> over your mouth and tried to breathe <laughs> and i didn't see anybody who really cared about social distancing i mean you, you don't really get that close so you yeah. really kind of got as close as you normally yeah. did it seemed pr- pretty normal i mean i would say the only thing that changed and it, it depended on where you lived and and with with what we had here on the central coast not much changed but you know, even when like beaches in Southern California were being shut down and they weren't here yet, you know, at one point they did shut all the state park access, you know, they, they boarded up the Otter Rock stairs. I mean, there was, yeah, there were certain things that happened. And like, to me, like that's a positive memory because, you know, I was fortunate enough, like, you know, Dan's house is right there and we had built a trail 10 years before COVID ever hit, maybe 15. Oh yeah. And we resurrected that trail from his house. So we just went right from his house, right down to Otter. We were surfing, Otter Rock in the summertime by ourselves, high tide at 1 p.m. in the afternoon because nobody could get down. The only people that were coming in were parking like down towards Beverly yeah, Beach and, and then walking the, in. Oh, man. Yeah. So so that to me was like, man, that'll never happen again. <laughs> yeah, that's definitely special. We we did something similar with South Beach. We'd go down the, the jetty. We, we'd hike all the way in because they closed the car. You could yep. go in. So it was a long hike, but yeah. still like not very many people. And Yeah. And I did that once or twice where they had it. I parked at the, parked at the you know, in the, the little gate. neighborhood there. The oh, gate. the neighborhood. Yeah, yeah. And then I either rode my skateboard in or, or stole my little daughter's scooter and rode that in. <laughs> <laughs> that was cool, though, because everybody was do, who was doing that, they were all riding skateboards and. 
it yeah. was kind of a cool yeah, little like memory. You, you either you either put your wetsuit on and ride in in your wetsuit, or you have a backpack and you yeah. pack all your stuff in, and it's like you know it'd be like hiking into the camp or something, yeah. but just yeah. not as far. <laughs> I definitely felt like. Okay, if you go all the way in and you're not sure if it's good, I mean, you're kind of like committed because yep. <laughs> you can't really check it. There's no camera. There's no, you know. Exactly. But yeah, there was a couple times, God, just nobody out. So yeah. fun. I mean. And and, super fun. And But like you say, like it, it was a little bit more of a commitment to yeah. go in there because like you can't check it. You're like going there. And if you go there and there's no waves and you come back, like you just wasted a half hour of your day. Yeah. <laughs> half hour. I don't, you're, you're faster than me. Well. <laughs> if you can get in about in half an hour. Oh, well, on my geez. skateboard or scooter. Oh, yeah. okay, that's true. I didn't. If I, I was if I was yeah. walking, it would be you know a half hour. I just have normal skateboards. I don't have a long board, so I, yeah. it's not really that helpful on the on the gravel. Sounds like you need to upgrade your quiver. I do. <laughs> I do. I need a real. I need a real long board. <laughs> I'm the opposite. Like I don't ride a lot of short boards in the in the water, but I'll ride a regular skateboard, not a long board, at the skate park. Uh, I like the speed. <laughs> so you're you've been surfing for how long? Uh, I started when I was nine. Let me do the math real quick here. So <laughs> you can use your fingers. I always have to use mine, man. I, <laughs> I totally can't. I got to so, yeah, use paper. Uh, I've been at it for uh, I guess thirty-four years. Yeah, thirty-four, almost thirty-five years now. Your dad surfs. Yeah. Did he did he? How long has he been surfing? So so he actually he 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 did it for a short period of time. Uh, my parents lived in Kauai for a little less than a year before my brother and I were born. Yeah. Um, and then my mom was pregnant with my brother and they moved back to the States before, before she gave birth. But, um, that's kind of was his first introduction to surfing, um, is, is living in Kauai. And then when he came back, you know, he didn't surf at all. And, and this is about what, like 19. So this would have been like when we first started, you mean this when he came back? Oh, when he came back, that would have been like, let me think here, 78, 76, it would have been like. Yeah, 1975, 76. Oh, oh, yeah, okay, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so my parents were, like, literally living in a tent, like, total hippies in, in Kauai, like, oh. on the island of Kauai oh, that's in, awesome. in the mid-70s. So, <laughs> um, so yeah, that was, uh, I'm sure that was a fun time, too. To, I'd go to, back in time. So, exactly. I'm so sick. <laughs> um, so, yeah, so he moved back, and then, you know, my brother, my brother Lars was born, and then I was born uh, just over two years later um, down in Coos Bay, North Bend there. And, uh, yeah, we didn't, we didn't start surfing. Like I said, I was nine, my brother was 11 and then my dad was 34 and we all basically learned how to surf together. So oh. it's always been a, a, a family affair for us. And it's something that all three of us are continually, um, doing to this day and, and probably more of a, uh, uh, what, what would I say? <clears throat> we're all, we're all pretty at, uh, I mean, we all, we all surf, right? We're, we're, we're avid surfers. I guess I would say we yeah. surf as much as we can, all three of us. <laughs> and we're just like super stoked. And, you know, we always, I really enjoy being able to surf with my dad and my brother still. It's like really fun to just go out with your family in the water and, and you guys compete. Oh yeah. You all competed. I think all <laughs> three of you competed in the last contest in the stand up division and you, and you all, it was, I mean, I guess it was only three of you. So you all placed yeah, for second, yeah. third. Well, basically we went out, we went out at Otter when we should have never went out there. We all got our asses kicked. <laughs> <laughs> the ocean was in control that day. The ocean won. But uh, <laughs> we, we all caught one wave each and made it back to the beach. I, I was about to go back out the, out in the rip and rescue my dad that day. Cause he was like getting pushed with the South swell and the South wind and how bumpy it was. He was getting pushed to the North, like around the corner. And he, I thought he was going to get stuffed into the punch bowl. Oh no, <laughs> oh, dude. <laughs> And if you've ever been down there when the, t when the tide is high and there's some swell, it's uh, it's a little gnarly. Yeah. No, so. I don't surf otter when it gets really big. Yeah. I'm just not, I don't, uh, not me. Yeah. But you guys, you guys got cojones. I mean, I think that's, that's what, uh, <laughs> I mean, and your dad, you, you were telling a story too about your dad and maybe a spot we won't mention, but you guys saw him out there paddling out in this huge surf, you know? trying to remember what you're thinking about here but you know the i can't really we're on camera video too so okay. i can't like mouth it to you either <laughs> I feel like a pencil here you know uh but you know a little further south and gets oh, pretty yeah. big and yeah. goes right yeah i know what you're talking about 
<laughs> yeah, we won't name any spots. People are like, what's your favorite place to surf? I'm like, I'd tell you, but I'd have to kill you. Yeah, <laughs> you're already dead. <laughs> it's so it's so funny how, you know, just surfers and, and just their general nature, like typically most surfers are territorial in some way with regards to where they grew up and, and where they like to surf and what types of waves or, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of, <clears throat> sometimes I understand it and sometimes I just don't get it either. Like, like how someone like, can can be so adamant that like oh, i grew up here this is my wave and nobody else is allowed here yeah that's weird so, i've definitely struggled in that in my head like i feel like but i'm sure you've even witnessed some of that here locally you know i felt it happened some yeah you probably felt it's it or weird witnessed it and it's just like well you just start if, feeling entitled yeah and it's like no nah, no nah, nah, i want to be chill and it's always like some stand-up paddleboarder comes out and i'm like get out of here you know like <laughs> just chill out man and then when they talk to you it's cool but it's like what is that weird it's like the the, the lizard brain you know comes out or something yeah well and typically you know it's it's you know and everything keeps changing too but it, but if you're a surfer you pretty much you pretty much hate boogie boarders you hate stand-up paddle boarders and the new thing is you know is you hate foil boarders <laughs> and and you can just go down the list you hate kayakers like and then surfers hate each other. So it's like, <laughs> it just doesn't seem like the kind of sport that's like full of hate, you know? Yeah. It's not well, supposed to be. It's supposed to be stoked and chill and, yeah, you and, know. And it's one of those things here, you know, I think the, the challenging thing in Oregon is, is, as you know, you know, the waves are so fickle here and it doesn't, you know, when I, I used to think, oh my God, Oregon's amazing. Like the waves are so good here. But then, you know, I've, I've done a lot of traveling throughout my life to, you know, pretty much every trip I've ever went on has been like, oh, I'm traveling here to go surf and um or with my family or or but usually even when i've traveled with my family there's a wave there that we're that we're at that i get a surf and um but yeah the waves are so inconsistent in oregon from day to day that uh you know the sur really surfing here i mean it's i i probably a three or a four out of ten on a on a normal day is yeah. what you're going to get whereas you know, I remember, I don't remember the person that said it, but they're like, yeah, I, my, my goal in my life is I always live 30 minutes or less from a world-class wave. Oh, wow. Like that was like wherever they live in the world, like I need to be at least a half hour from a world-class wave, you know, like Jeffrey's Bay or, uh -huh. you know, you go down the list of all these world-class waves that break, you know, 250 to 300 days a year. And it's like, could you imagine if you live somewhere like that? But then also you're dealing with more, more yeah. people typically yeah. it's crowded and, you know, depending on where it is, but. So I don't yeah. know if I could handle the crowd. I was down in Santa Cruz like five or six years ago. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't surf, but I, I saw that uh, pleasure point. Yeah. I, I just couldn't believe how many people were in the water. It was banana. And then I, I met this guy later on. He's like, yeah, I went to pleasure point and I surfed for, he said some ridiculous number like of hours for five hours. Yeah. And I got four waves. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> just like that. And I was like, dude, that's like, I could have way more fun here and crappier waves. Yeah. And, <laughs> and catch catch 30 or 40 waves yeah. instead of four but yeah, five but hours <laughs> his four waves might have been really good but <laughs> although sometimes yeah. dude sometimes it only yeah. takes one good wave it to does. make your day it does well and it's funny too like i just got a text from paul bradley the, yeah um he's down at saludita in mexico right oh, now what is he saying and he's like he's like i'm gonna i'm gonna surf more i'm gonna surf on a wave more on this surf trip than i will all summer in oregon because uh -huh. like the the rides are just like four or five, 600 yards. Like you're kicking out and your legs are jello. Oh dude. You know? And, uh, that's why he's got to skate. Yeah. Get your legs strong so you can hit, hold on to those long waves. Exactly. I don't need that here though. <laughs> no, <laughs> no. Most of the waves here are not that long unless it gets really good in the sand set up. So, but that's the thing too, is, you know, when it does get good in Oregon, it's, you know, when it's good here, it's as good as anywhere. It just doesn't happen very often. And it's hard to yeah. pick the day that it's going to be like, Oh, today's going to be the day. So what are your perfect, so are we going to try the booch? I'm going to try the, Dude, this is good. Superberry kombucha. And then I usually shout out to the grocery outlet, Donna, nice. Donna's the <laughs> owner. And she just, she had, she heard her husband are pilots and she's like, oh, you want to go out in the plane with us? I'm like, really? yeah, yeah, I want to go, I want to go <laughs> fly. She's like, we can't ever get anybody to come on with us. I went on with Kelly Barker okay. and I survived. <laughs> and yeah, we almost missed the, 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 in Pacific city, the, oh boy. <laughs> the little runway there It was a little early, but we just barely got, you know, <laughs> right. No, on. He's good. He's good. But yeah, brew doctor out of Portland. They're pretty cool people. I almost got to deliver this by bicycle when I lived in Corvallis. So I was going to deliver kombucha by that was bicycle. Be your job. Yeah. I was like, <laughs> I was going to deliver. It would have been awesome, but uh, I didn't do that. I moved here instead. Good um, choice. But yeah, you're, so what are your perfect 
you know, describe your conditions that like, that's when you want to go. I mean, <laughs> that's a tough one. <laughs> oh. I mean, cause there's, there's so many, there's so many different, uh, you know, I would, but I would say like my perfect, my perfect session would just be, and it doesn't even necessarily have to be giant waves, but just super clean waves with just like me and my friends out, you know, mm-hmm. just not any particular beach or any particular wave, you know, head tall, head and a half tall and just perfect, perfect peeling waves that, yeah, I mean, that would be nice, clean, glassy, maybe a little offshore wind. Wow. Just to give it a little bit of feathering as it's breaking, you know? <laughs> Yeah, a little feather. <laughs> yep. So, and I would probably say, uh, you know, if I had a choice earlier morning versus midday, but sometimes those early morning sessions I've found are, you know, I've had, I've surfed a couple of times where like, there's been like a double rainbow and the waves were just like, you know, right over the waves, yeah. the rainbow was, and it was just, you know, sometimes you just have a magical session where something happens yeah. with mother nature that, <clears throat> that makes it extra special. But it definitely feels a lot more li- alive out in the ocean than it does. Like, I mean, the forest is always alive and there's birds and whatever, but the ocean's just moving so much and there's so much in the ocean that's moving so much. I don't know. Yeah. Th- no, the ocean is in constant flux always. And um, the thing that I love, you know, even when I'm teaching a surf lesson, <clears throat> you know, it's like if, if you really like to never do the same thing, then surfing's probably a good sport for you to try because you'll never catch the same wave twice. You'll never do the same thing on the same wave twice. Like it will never be identical, you know, no matter how many times you try, like the water that you're catching from one wave to the next is always different. It's always changing. It's always in motion. It's always moving. And, um, and you know, it's, it's, it's also unpredictable in that sense too, because when you throw in wind and you throw in swell and swell direction and currents, water temperature, um, and you know, everything is just always moving out there and, you know, it just really, really helps you live in the moment. And that's what I love about surfing. Um, is it, is is it, you don't care what just happened or what's going to happen. You're just focused on that instant right in front of you when you're catching a wave and paddling for a wave and riding on a wave and there's it just clears your mind of all other thoughts so i think it's a really healthy thing for people to do and i think that's why you're continuing to see among other things but you're continuing to see more and more growth um, in the surfing industry and more people are surfing which is creating you know these limited resources because there's only so many waves in the world yeah there's only so many oceans and there's only so many waves you can ride and so as you continue to get more and more surfers that are overcrowding these certain spots, um, you know, it, it, it presents challenges for those, for those spots to handle that type of crowd. I mean, you could even, you could even talk here locally, like during COVID, how, like how packed is Otter Rock? Oh, it was sometimes. weird. Yeah. Cause all the people were camping and on the road yeah. and they were all coming out here. I was surfing like during the actual closure with some guys like, from Ben and they brought his kids out. He's like, yeah. Oh, we're camping at Walmart. And yeah. Like, what are you doing here, dude? We're supposed to be closed. Yeah. <laughs> you know, this is why I live here. <laughs> Go surf your river wave, man. Yeah. <laughs> they were really cool though. It was like, whatever. Yeah. And, but I think you're going to continue to see that, you know, cause, cause the thing that, that I've noticed with COVID is, is if, if you already enjoyed the mountains and the ocean, it was awesome. But yeah. then what COVID did is it pushed all these people out to the beach or to, into the mountains, whether it was hiking or mountain biking yeah, or camping, because yeah. you, there was nothing else. You couldn't go to a concert. You couldn't go to a professional like sporting event. You, there were no youth camps. There were no like s- sports for, you know, the 18 and yeah. under group. Yeah. Like what did families do? You know, the, there was very little to do. And so you, you had to find things to in the woods or mother nature somewhere at the beach yeah. or, or in the mountains. And so yeah. I think, I think there's been a huge, um, a huge impact with regards to the amount of people that are, that are going out and experiencing that now. And I think, you know, COVID kind of exacerbated that it, it made it grow way too fast, way too quickly. Um, and you know, you could even look early on, like I remember early on during COVID, like if you wanted to buy a bike, a mountain bike, you couldn't buy a bike. Like there were no bikes for sale in, in the United States of America <laughs> because everyone bought them up because there was nothing else to do. And like, they all had these, these refund checks or whatever, the, the stimulus yeah, checks, right? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, heck yeah. Like the, I, then the surf shop had like record sales, right? Cause everybody was going in and buying stuff cause surfing was great. Right. Yeah. Cause you could go to the beach. It was something you could still do that wasn't shut down. Oh. So, 
Yeah, that drove me nuts. Though. Oh, you're shut down the access, but you're not gonna shut down the beach. And I'm just like, I'm the grumpiest guy on the beach. Like, Arr! you know, just, just, just be, hey, just go to the beach. You know. <laughs> yeah, that was, that was, that was gonna, that's gonna go down as a really fun memory, though. Like, that was probably my favorite part is hiking out there. And yeah, but uh, so you've been surfing for thirty three years. Thir- yeah, now, thir- yeah, thirty four, thirty four, thirty five. I think. Oh. Yeah. And you, you, you got through your regular surfing and then eventually you started surfing bigger waves. Yeah. Yeah. So it's kind of a progression for me. You know, I, I, you know, most surfers don't start out just like, Oh, I'm going to go out in the biggest waves I can find. Um, you know, it's, it's a slow progression because as most surfers happen throughout their careers, they'll start surfing, you know, when they first are learning, they're surfing one to two, three foot waves. And then all of a sudden those don't seem that big and you start surfing, four or five, six foot waves. And then it just like, the more you go out in those types of waves, you're like, Oh, I can go out in bigger waves. And then, you know, at some point certain people reach a limit to where they're like, I don't want to ever experience that again. That was scary. And I don't like that. Um, and then other people are like, Oh, this isn't so bad. Like I can go out in bigger waves. Um, and so, yeah, it was, it was definitely something, you know, when you're, when you're out in the ocean and the waves are massive, giant, like 20, 25 foot plus, And it's like, the ocean is just not a drop of water out of place and it's just smooth as a hot knife through butter. It's, uh, it's pretty, pretty hard to like feel that in anything else in your, in, in my life, I guess like those days are, are hard to come by. Um, and they're really special. And, uh, you know, just like sometimes I can go out on a day like that and like literally I got a, I got a grin on my face for weeks or months afterwards. Cause it was just that amazing. It just, you know, I always say my, my stoke meter is redlining. It's like 12 out of 10, you know, and, uh, you're just, you just can't like, you just, somebody sees you and you're like, dude, you're doing really well. Aren't you? Like, yes, I am. I'd have to say though, some of that, my, my happiest moments were after I got like an incredible ride. Yeah. Like I just, you know, where you can't really just say anything or you got a sick ride and then somebody that, you know, actually saw it. Yep. And, they, and they're like, oh, I saw that. And they're like, good, good job. And you're like, oh, dude, I never felt like this before. Yeah. <laughs> this is a crazy feeling. <laughs> yeah. And it's just like permanent, like you can, you'll see that vivid memory in your brain for the rest of your life. You know, you'll remember what that looked like, what it felt like. And, uh, and yeah, it's a pretty special thing. So there's, there's not a lot of sports that you can, <clears throat> that you can do like surfing to where like literally like when you, when you get barreled or you're inside the tube, like what other, what other sports are out there. There's not many to where like mother nature is literally hugging you. And oh, certain, like, you're, yeah. you're surrounded by mother nature in, in the wave itself. I never thought of it like that. Um, yeah. But you know, the, the, and I guess just to talk about like getting barreled and, and you know, whether you, you call it being in the green room or getting shacked or barreled or tubed or whatever terminology you want to use. It is amazing how time sometimes will just slow down and it, and it just goes completely silent. Like you don't hear anything and time, time slows down or, or sometimes it almost feels like it speeds up. And because basically like you're going really fast usually when you're in the barrel and then the wave passes you by. So you're going super fast and then all of a sudden it feels like you're going slow. Oh, yeah. There's the like lip, two things the happening. The lip goes by you, know, like, you well, yeah. and now you're behind it and you're looking out of this little tunnel or big tunnel, depending on how big it is. And, um, <laughs> And then, you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Big tunnels. Uh, um, and then, and then when you're inside, like the wave will spit sometimes more than once inside the barrel and like, it'll kind of get all misty in there. And, you know, I can, I can remember vividly remember my best barrel in my life where like, as soon as the lip threw over me and I was on a tow board when it happened, and I felt like if I, if I didn't have my feet strapped on, it was, it literally felt like a vacuum was sucking me backwards into the tube. There was so much air coming into the tube Whoa. when the lip threw over and it felt like it would have lifted me and pulled me right off my board if I wasn't strapped in. Oh dude. And that was, that wasn't like, I've never felt that before. That must that, have been a sick barrel. That was one of those big tunnels. <laughs> <laughs> Another big tunnel. <laughs> um, oh. But yeah, that, uh, that was a memorable one. Like I'll never forget that one. Yeah. So, 
Um, but yeah, that's, and that's, you know, just like a lot of surf movies talk about it, like getting barreled is kind of the ultimate experience in surfing. Like when you're surfing at a level where you can pull in and out of barrels, like, you know, not everyone has that experience in surfing. So it's something that you got to really put a lot of time and energy and effort and sacrifice and commitment in to get to that level to where you're able to do that, you know, cause it's a hard thing to do. It's not easy. Dude, I got, I got, I didn't surf this much this, this last year because my back was all jacked or whatever, but I did get a day where I got out and I got a pretty, a pretty awesome barrel. And it was just like, it wasn't like a hard wave to get into, but it did take a lot of practice to like not jump off my board or something, you know? Cause when you're in there, when the wave goes, does whatever it's doing, it's like, Oh, you know, like I'm going to jump off. Yeah. And it, it like threw over and I was like. And I just, put, I just put my arms and I just pointed and I was just like, I'm getting out of here. And then, you know, I just, it was, yeah. and you I, know. And I think that's kind of the survival instinct of most people when they get inside the barrel. It's like, oh, I got to jump off my board. I'm going to wipe out. But sometimes if you just keep all your weight centered right over your feet, you know, and, and you have the right line, you've drawn the right line in the barrel, like you're going to come out. So, but not always. You know, even though <laughs> you, sometimes you don't come out, it's like, my buddy Billy, he's like, he's like, dude, I take closeouts all the time, and it's like, you know, if you're in there for a while and it still closes, it's still kind of cool. Like, it's still fun to be oh, in for there, sure. yeah. As it's, long as you don't get hurt, yeah. But that's the thing is, you might get hurt, right? Because sometimes you'll get sucked I, over. I actually believe, I actually believe what Garrett McNamara said. You know, he said the safest place to be is deep in the barrel because the energy of the wave has already thrown over the top of you and hit hit down really? below. So yes, you might still get sucked over and down, but the the initial impact has already happened so the lip can't just yeah. slam you down and push yeah. you to the bottom i mean the, the worst the worst injuries typically in surfing are when that when that lip detonates right on you in the impact zone and hits you okay. especially if it's a big wave yeah like yeah i mean it, it's like getting hit by a school bus you know <laughs> school bus. <laughs> yeah have you ever been hit by a school the, bus the, see i told i was telling somebody it's like oh he's like a superhero he's like superhero level <laughs> You know, getting hit by the school bus. See, now you're just <laughs> saying it. And I remember you said you were talking about getting wiped out uh, when you were, you were towing. And you are like, oh, I felt like the wave was Godzilla pulling my wetsuit off or something. And it's just like. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're talking about my worst wipe out of my life there. It's oh, you remember Reef. that? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Ooh, let's hear it, man. Uh, what happened? Well, basically, what happened was it's, it's hard to prepare for because the wave, the wet Scott's reef, it breaks over this really shallow reef. It goes from 90 feet of water to a really shallow reef that it breaks over. So the, the wave itself breaks below sea level because there's so much water being drawn off the reef so quickly that when the wave comes in and the, and it's getting close to that reef, it sucks the water off and all of a sudden that water drops. And so like, even when someone's watching someone surf that wave, kind of like Chopu and Tahiti yeah. is you like, you can be standing up looking down and you can barely see the person down in the bottom of the wave. Oh, uh, oh. And so it's, it's really like plays with your mind because it literally like the whole ocean is above you and you're surfing down here. Oh, and so, yeah. so it's, it's super dangerous cause it's super shallow. Um, but anyway, on that one, I, I, I was like, it was a big one. You know, I remember the swell that day was, I think the buoys were like 15 feet at 17 seconds Whew. and the wave there doesn't necessarily get that tall. Yeah. It's like yeah. the bigger it gets, the thicker the wave gets. The, I want to say the wave was almost as thick as it was tall. Like it was like 15 feet thick and like 15 feet tall. <laughs> Are those, is that the day where you guys got some of those pictures? Yeah. Up in Aussies? Yeah. And I think that was, I want to say that was either 2000, 2008 or 2009. Like that was when, you know, Dan and I were nominated for what's that billabong XXL. Oh, contest. And you guys went down there and we got to go down to Anaheim and be a part of that. And it was super fun just to, you know, cause it's once in a lifetime chance probably, unless something happens and we, you know, we continue to, to do push the limits of, of what's possible. Um, but yeah, that was fun to experience that. But, um, but you know, I look back on that, on that wipeout too, just because it's like at the time it didn't seem like that big of a deal, but you know, after having so much time to reflect on it, I could remember like I'd be driving my truck, you know, like to go surf and I'd be thinking about that wipeout. Like really? you know, it was haunting me. Really? Kind of like all of a sudden I'd be like, shit, I'm still driving. Like my hands are sweating and I'd like, you know, go into my brain and I just kind of replay that yeah. moment. But you, you got PTSD, you know, uh, you're like I bringing you back to the, to yeah. the barrel and you're like, Ugh. yeah. What happened on the, on the wave? 
Like, well, what exactly? basically, I, I tried to like do what you'd normally do when you're on a wave is you'd kind of like go down the line. Yeah. But this way breaks so fast and so hollow that basically you have to point the nose of your board like straight at the beach. Oh, pretty much. Oh, in and, order to not get sucked. Yeah, because the water's coming. It felt like the water was coming up the face of the wave at about 30 miles an hour, like sucking up the yeah. face. And so if you're if you're going sideways, you're going up. Um, and so that was my mistake because I went a little too sideways. And by the time I tried to recorrect and oh, get down the yeah. wave, I was at the top of the lip and it was just, it did basically oh. just pulled my, my board off my feet. And then I like Superman down to the bottom. And I remember thinking I was up at the top going in my mind, I was like, here we go. <laughs> did you see the reef? Could you see the reef? I couldn't see the reef, but I remember I like, I like jumped, you know, hands first, like Superman thinking like, okay, I'm going to hit the wave and I'm going to penetrate. Yeah. You know, like you normally do yeah. when you do that. And I hit the wave and I just started cartwheeling. Oh. And like, I, there's like photo sequence. Like I do like seven cartwheels before the wave. It's still breaking. And I'm just cartwheeling down the face because the water's going up so fast I can't penetrate. And so I just cartwheel down the wave. And then finally it just, whoom, and it just swallows me. And from there I just was like, it was the most powerful beating I'd ever have because it, it bounced me off the reef. And then at one point, I wasn't going anywhere. I was just in one spot. I wasn't going up, wasn't going down or moving at all. And it felt like I had like six grizzly bears around me, just bear hugging me, holding me there. And then slowly as the, as the wave probably continued to move across the reef, it slowly just kind of, I just kind of started going side to side and just slowly let me up. And, and I think, I want to say somebody might have it on video, but I think right, like right as my head popped up, the next wave was right there. Oh, no. um, and the next one was a lot smaller. Okay. Um, but I don't really remember that that much. And I think on, I think even on video, it was only, it was only like 15 seconds, but it was like the most violent 15 seconds you could ever imagine. <laughs> so it was like being in the octagon against, you know, six grizzly bears. <laughs> oh, dude. <laughs> and, uh, and yeah, I came up and I had like a big hole in my wetsuit right underneath my life jacket. All my, all my tips of my fingers were bleeding on one hand. I had scratches like a, I'd, I'd seen a tiger underneath there oh, and the man. tiger had scratched my helmet. So, um, so yeah, it was, it was a violent beat down for sure. <laughs> I'll remember that one for the rest of my life too. <laughs> yeah. So, Jesus, and, man. and luckily I didn't, you know, land on my head or, or break a leg or, you know, I mean, there's a variety of things that could have happened that would have been really catastrophic and yeah. bad. But at the time, you know, I, I'd, yeah. I'd been training for that really hard and I, I knew what the consequences were. Um, but looking back on that, it could have turned out a lot worse. You know, like I said, mo mother nature is always in charge. Yeah. <laughs> so you, uh, man, every time I see you, you're like ripped. Like, I'm like, you just like te you work out when you're doing PE all day. Like, is that how you like, or do you actually work out? Or are you just like, <laughs> you know, I, I don't, I like, I pretty much, I mean, I'm just, I'm active all day typically for, for what I do, whether, you know, whatever it is, but, but surfing is really my main form of, of activity now. Yeah. But you don't work your biceps surfing. Like we, we don't know how you I'm, get the freaking I mean, biceps I, like I, that. I, I Here, show the it. camera your bicep. Come on. Come on. Let's see. Come on, Dayton. Come on. Let's get, let's get the, let's get the bicep. Can we see oh, it? That's all I got. <laughs> yeah. He's, he's, he's not turning it sideways here. He's kind of giving you the, <laughs> the chicken wing. <laughs> <laughs> All right, enough about my biceps. <laughs> enough about my biceps you got, and my forearms. <laughs> you got to be doing some kind of curl. You, don't you get got a man crush on me? <laughs> <laughs> I want to know what you... Are you working out? Like, I want to do what you're doing. <laughs> well, um, yeah, I don't know. I, I surf and I just stay active. But, I mean, here's the deal. I, I Yeah, I'm a PE teacher. I coach soccer. I do surf lessons. I, I'm all... I'm, I, you know, I... I do landscaping work. I do yard work. I'm just always moving and always doing stuff, but I don't, I don't go to the gym. I don't, uh, you know, I, I ride bikes. I, you know, I just, I'm just active all day, but yeah. I would say I've just, you know, with what my lifestyle is, it just helps me main, maintain my fitness levels. Um, but am I in great shape right now? No, not necessarily. Like if I had to go, you know, run a race like a 10 K or, or even play a full soccer game, like I'd be, I'd be you know, so sore because I haven't trained for those things. Yeah. Um, but you know what? You could probably just go toe surfing. <laughs> and I, I, you took me out and I got, uh, I got two waves and then one I bailed on cause yeah. I was scared out of my mind. That's okay. I was so deep in the barrel. I was, I would have been deep in the barrel and I was like, 
kicked out. Yeah. <laughs> like, I don't want anything to do with oh that. Oh my yet. god, I'd never I'd never seen such a monstrosity. Yeah. But like I only took three waves and you and you pulled me around. And it was yeah. like Paul Bradley said. He said it w- it's going to hurt this shit. Like yeah. I couldn't like even you walk. You woke up the next day and you're like, "Oh my god, I didn't know I had muscles there." Yeah. <laughs> I I don't even I still don't understand how I got that sore from that. Like it yeah. doesn't make any sense, but it was really really hard work. But like you do that like for long periods of time like yeah, well, it's I've one of those like things. Too. Yeah, but it's one of those things too. Like, I have a lot of muscle memory built up with those muscles that okay. you use to do oh, that. Oh, yeah. Um, but you know, like if you had to train for something, like like go wakeboarding or go water skiing or do something to where you're getting pulled up under your own power by a boat, you know, out of the water, because that's a that's a lot of it when you're talking about towing big waves. Like, you got to know how to get up out of the water, and and if your body's not used to that, like you're going to fatigue really quickly. So, um, so so it's more just not not having the muscle memory and. Yeah. Yeah, and your I mean, your your biceps aren't quite as big as mine. Man, I don't want to, <laughs> I don't want to show anybody. <laughs> but but yeah, I mean it's it's definitely uh you know, usually at the beginning of the season I get a little bit more tired and fatigued and I might be a little sore, but once you're in shape for that and you've been doing it consistently, like you just yeah, you just yeah. you're just in shape for it. Just like anything you do, you yeah. know, the, what's the best surfing? What's the best training for surfing? Surfing. You know, so do, do what it is that you're trying to train for and do that specific activity. What about, what do you eat? What do you like? Do you like eat like, uh, I don't know, granola or something? Like what, what's, <laughs> I couldn't think of anything. Like what are the freaking kale? Ca- yeah. Kale. What's I everybody mean, eating now? That's I, cool. Like, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I try, I definitely try to eat healthy. I was definitely, uh, definitely raised on, on a really good, healthy, you know, diet of, lots of fruits and veggies and, and, you know, as much organic food as possible. Um, but you know, I, I, I eat my French fries and I, you know, I eat my fried food. Burger 101. Oh man. Burger 101. So <laughs> oh, <good>. dude. <laughs> <laughs> I resist that place every time I drive by it. I'm like, I can't. Yeah. And then sometimes I lose. Yeah. Well, <laughs> kind of like eating the tasty tiki last night too. It's like, I could eat one of those every night. I think that those, those, t- those tasty bowls are so oh, delicious, man. But it's not actually, I mean, I guess the pork might be a little fatty. I guess there's like sugar in the sauce. It's not that bad. Yeah. Though. But none of, none of that's fried though. You know, it's just, it's not like it's like fried, like a French fry. Oh, oil, yeah, you know yes. what I mean? So yeah, it's, it's gotta be halfway it's, decent. It's definitely way healthier than mickey d's yep <laughs> i mean i would say that's the one so that is so you bring up mickey you know mcdonald's but you know i since high school and maybe maybe a couple years in college like i literally have not eaten fast food or or very seldom ever do and you know i'll go to arctic circle occasionally um you know i'll i'll stop at like a burgerville or or there's a few spots that i'll stop at like even um we were my, my wife and I were super late getting back from the Timbers game last week and we stopped it, you know, cause I never get to go. So we stopped it in and out and got a burger and fries. Like, you know, actually I just had a burger, but, um, but yeah, I mean, you gotta, you gotta make healthy choices for you yeah. and, and what yeah. you want to do, but you're, you're fading a little from the mic. You can just bring it a little closer, bring it in a little yeah, closer. Yeah. yeah. Oh, perfect. I'm, I'm scooting back. <laughs> you warned me about that. He's pulling a Johnny on us. I don't know if anybody from the beginning remembers. Johnny's actually here right now. We got a ton of people Johnny was here like, and Johnny a ton was of like comments. Way back. Oh, let's listen to the comments. What they? What we got? Anything? Well, any questions for the for the real deal? Let's see. Let's see who we have here in the comments. Janelle M. Goplin. Oh, hey. Uh, just look. The site is available. That is the first comment. It was 50 minutes ago. Um, Christy Volstead. Oh, that's my mom. Ah, yeah. She says she's here. (laughs) Nice. Um, Jennifer Hewlett's here. She says, go Ollie. (laughs) Oh, yeah. yeah. Your mom says she loves this visit. (laughs) Um, (laughs) And she remembers 1975 Kauai. I bet. I bet she does. (laughs) And then I'm assuming your father's Rex. No, that's my my Uncle Rex. Oh, your uncle. Oh, I didn't know he had an Uncle Rex. Yeah. Does he serve? Uncle Rex. He does not, but uh, he's driven the jet ski once or twice for us. Oh, nice. He's our he's our ski chauffeur. He he chauffeurs us around wow. out in the ocean. See, so your, your your dad's name's Spike and your uncle's name's Rex. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> who, and then who's Grandpa <laughs> Karen Schulz says, "Nice, love you, Ollie." <laughs> and that's then my, that's my mother-in-law. Oh, okay. <laughs> that's cool. And then Johnny says, "Why do you not have a yacht club membership?" <laughs> That is a good, you know what? You know why? Because I don't know how to sail. <laughs> I literally have never been on a sailboat in my life. Oh, seriously? <laughs> so that's that's another thing that uh, with my new job, I definitely have to uh, learn the ropes of sailing. Well, so. that was part of it. You don't have to sail, right? But I mean, why wouldn't you though? Yeah. Yeah. But I, but like I said, I want to, I want to know what, 
what everyone that's signing up for, for the classes or the tours or yeah. the camps are doing. Yeah. And I need to, you know, I want to know that firsthand of what they're going through. So, so yeah, I'm definitely going to, definitely going to learn the, I'll do the beginning sailing instruction class and, uh, get my feet wet on that. Johnny uh, says he'll teach you. Perfect. Dude, you gotta, <laughs> he'll be a great teacher. I know. I mean, anyone that lives on a sailboat should be a good teacher, I think. Dude, I went on a sailboat and we watched the new Star Wars. Oh, nice. He hates it. <laughs> he hates it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's hard to it's hard to beat the, you know, the new stuff or the sequels or the, you know, even I was even a little worried about the new Top Gun movie might not be that oh, good. Oh, did you see it? The new Top Gun movie was awesome. Really? I freaking loved it. Okay, I might yeah. have to check it out. I didn't even think about going. I was like, yeah. I see it. Maverick? Is it called Maverick yep. or something? Top Gun Is Maverick. Is it still Tom Cruise? Yep. Well, Still you can't you can't be a, you can't be a pilot that long. I guess I don't want to spoil it. I was going to ask you. I won't spoil it. <laughs> well, there's nothing to spoil. The the shots that they get, yeah. the, like you can see the G force in their faces because they're actually going through that. Oh yeah, and like, they're actually on there. Like it's awesome. Oh okay. Yeah. All right. I'm like down. you, like you're like I'm gripping sold. gripping the chairs yeah, when you're yeah. watching it because you like feel that you can <laughs> see their faces all contorted, all weird, and you're like, oh man, they're they're hitting nine ten Gs right now. Dude, that would be, I would probably think that if you were going to pick something that might be cooler than surfing or like more fun, it might be like being a jet pilot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that might be what it takes, you know, like. <laughs> Could be. Although I bet a lot of jet pilots like to surf. Probably. I mean, I don't know. I'm we're, totally all, guessing. we're all adrenaline junkies. Yeah. That's we all a... like that adrenaline. I just got back from a mountain bike festival and it's mountain bike, bike Oregon. It was okay. in Oak Ridge, oh, uh, nice. Oregon. Yeah. That's the mecca for mountain biking. Dude, I, I, I don't own a mountain bike. I used to own one a long time ago, but those guys are junkies too. Yeah. Yeah, the speed they get. Oh, yeah. And like they're going down these. Do you mountain bike at all? Yeah. And how much air they catch over jumps. It looks going fast. so <laughs> fun. And, and like these tracks are like miles long. So you're not, it's not just going down a hill and then you're done. It's kind of like snowboarding, but longer, I think. Yep. And I'm like, I don't even, I'm, it's just like this whole new thing. It's like yeah. if I can get a mountain bike. You should yeah. get one. It's great cross training too in the off season when the surf's not good. Oh, Just go ride your mountain bike on the on the trails. Oh, we got trails here. They're oh, building yeah. some more trails. Yeah. The the newts or whatever. Yep. No, um, we got some great trails here locally, and there's a ton all over Oregon. I mean. Oregon is definitely a destination when it comes to mountain biking for sure. I just, I had no idea. Like I'm discovering new things all the time. I still want to get a kayak. I think it'd be fun to kayak. I guess. Or is there easy, any reason to get a kayak or just get a stand up paddle board? You should get a kayak. <laughs> <laughs> you, should, you, should, you sound like you need to sign up for a kayak tour so you can experience what it's all about <laughs> i've taken my uh my, my longboard and i paddled up beaver creek okay for for training yeah i've just done that and that was like i'm like this is great like yeah. longboard's fine like i was able to keep up with my buddy and a on a stand-up paddleboard you know they had stand-up paddleboards yeah i'd say the only the only downside to a stand-up paddleboard is when the wind's up stand-up paddleboard is not that much fun because you're you're a sail in the wind and you're going to go backwards if it's blowing hard enough. <laughs> and the only way to go forwards is to lay down on your sup board and paddle. <laughs> oh yeah. And it's like really wide. Yep. So you're paddling all funny. Yep. You know? Exactly. <clears throat> all right. I'm going to throw that. This one's from left field. Biggest wave ever. You ridden. November 2nd, 2010. Who he knows exactly down. when. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Do you know um, what the time was? <laughs> I don't remember the time exactly, but, um, that was, that was actually during the Nell Scott contest and, um, and it was, it was massive. Like, I think that, I think you the have Stonewall, a picture this, I, I think I do. Yeah. The Stonewall buoy peaked at like 20, almost 25 feet at like 23 seconds, something ridiculous. And, uh, um, 25 at 23. And I'd never, yeah, I'd never been in an ocean that big <laughs> or no, I think it was, it was 24. I think it was 24.7 feet at 17 seconds. And I just remember the semifinal heat. Um, cause I, I actually towed Peter Barton's ski and he'd sucked a leash from one of the competitors surfboards Yeah, and he had no power on his ski. Oh, so I, I towed him in through the beach break and and like literally he was an inch away from letting go of his ski and just watching a 20 foot beach break wave just swallow his ski and like we barely made it in but anyway long story short like i hooked up to tow him in and i'm like hey let's just let this set pass you know because like a set will pass and it'll get a little smaller and then we'll head in and like it was 20 25 minutes later i'm like well shit i guess like it was just stacking on the horizon for endless like 
as far as you could see, you, you, there was no let, like it's just set after set after set after set for like an hour straight. Wow. It was, it was crazy. And the, and the waves that day were definitely in the 50 to 60 foot range on the sets. And we were, we were towing South reef because the contest was on North reef and man, they were just bombs. Like, like scary. Like everyone out there was scared. Like I remember I, I pulled up at one point and Kali Mamala who like, you know, he's, he's done it all. Yeah. Like professional Hawaii surfer, you know, freaking legit. Yeah. And he's like, Hey bro, you see me go down in there, you come get me. Like, you know, <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, he was like, he knew, he, he knew what was going on out there and he knew it was serious. And yeah. like, man, it's just, yeah, it's, it's crazy. For sure, I can uh, I can pull something up here yeah, for you. Yeah, though, that'd here. be dope. We might be able to. Uh, we'll see if I can how quickly it I can find it. Yeah, that I think I might have seen that picture too, and it's 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 an impressive one. Let me see here. Yeah, keep talking if you want. Here, I'm I'll thinking um, maybe you should send it to me, and I'll or you can email it to me. Like oh. text it to you. Yeah, and then we can put it on the. screen. Green. Let's see. Yeah. Oh, actually, I don't know if I can do that on that. Is your email logged in? Not on that. Well, switch to my account. You know how to switch accounts? I can fix. See, it. you're on, you're on Ron. You switch over to me. But like, I want to see that picture. <laughs> I think uh, we should show yeah, the it audience. Was, be... It was big and scary that day. I think we that if I remember correctly, the there were uh, there were like six skis that went down that day out right. in the water. There that's were six it, people it. that lost their Damn. skis. Here, I'll, yeah, I'll just get you to email it to me. I'll show you, I'll show you my email. Oh. Yeah, it might take me a second to find it. Oh, that's it. fine. I that's was... fine. I, I, I really want to, I think this, I think that would be dope. Let's see. I was, I'm going to write my email down. Let's do it later. <coughs> Trying not to say my email address into the thing. Not that anybody's going to harass me. <laughs> oh, 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 hey. Hey. Yeah. Oh. Uh, okay. I still have a Hotmail. Who out there has a Hotmail still? I do. You still have a Hotmail? I've had it since 1995, I think. Dude, 95. Yo Primo at Hotmail. Ooh. <laughs> Everybody's going to be sending all the emails now. <laughs> well, I just delete them anyway. <laughs> yeah, just send it to there, and then we should I'm be able to. I'm looking for my 2010s here, but I'm struggling. Dude, I got a 32 gigabyte phone. I can't keep that many photos on there. I got 64. See, I need a 64. I need to double it. Yeah, I got to double it. You know, I used to have the, the 16. And then, like, every time I get a new phone, it's like, for some reason, I can't keep as much on there. I just, I, I don't know if it's me or the phone. <laughs> but it used to be, it used to be, like, a couple of gigabytes. It used was, to be, like, 16 was the standard. Oh, 16 was a ton. Yeah. Now, I hear about people get who have, like, a terabyte on their phone. And I'm like, holy. You can put, like, four holy. terabytes on the newest Xbox That is crazy. Console. I remember terabyte was this obscure thing that you only heard about. No, you, never, you didn't know anybody who actually had a terabyte of anything. 1,000 gigabytes. So, um, uh, Mr. Richardson. Yes, sir. What, uh, what kind of surfboards does a superhero surfer <laughs> ride? <laughs> I would say it depends on the waves, but I pretty much... I pretty much have a have a board for every every type of wave. I would say, whether it's two foot or twenty foot or everything in between. I have, I even have a foil board that I've been riding to and been trying to get that get that dialed in. But my equipment's outdated now. I haven't had it for very long. But man, the foil the foil world has changed things. Really, what's going on with the new foils? Well, they're just, you know, they're, they're different aspects. They have high aspect ratio and all these different things that, uh, make them specific for certain types of waves. And, uh, boy, I am struggling to find this picture. Yeah. You know, if you can't find it, it's cool. Yeah. Well, just after the, you know, like you described it, it's like 200 foot tall. <laughs> oh, uh, I just found it. Oh, <laughs> I'll send you two here. Oh yeah. Yeah. Send, send up the, um, yeah, the, Casey, you want to pull up your email? Over here? Oh, you're just, uh, yeah. It's all the same. Yeah. Just gotta, it should just automatically be logged in. Copy that. <laughs> I'll, try, oh, I'll try not to say this out loud as I do it. <laughs> oh, I got you. I got you in here already anyway. Is that the... Which one? This is, this See is pick, Is this the right one? Picture crab. This might be... Oh, no, it's this one. Click on that one. <clears throat> yeah, so I don't know how long it'll take to go through. Oh, but it's I all just good. We, we got time. We can... We got time to fill. We got 
Sam, so you um, you don't have like a specific brand that you're like all about? Well, or is it a shape I, or brand or? Yeah, I mean, I would say that. So I have, uh, I got a couple Murdy tow boards and a couple Murdy long boards, and he shaped my big wave gun as well. Um, so Murdy surfboards is, I have the most boards from any shaper. Um, and I've been riding for him for quite a while now. And, um, man, his graphics and his, his airbrush jobs on his boards and his glass jobs are just flawless. Um, and he's just got some amazing shapes that work really great for the Pacific Northwest. Yeah. Um, and I really love his boards and, you know, he's got them all over Oregon and up and down the West coast. Um, and he's pretty, pretty well known um, around here as well. And I see lots of people riding Murdy, Murdy boards for sure. So, um, yeah, he just made you that new tow board. Yeah. 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 The shortest, that's a five, four. I've never had one that short, man. That thing is just, it's like playing a video game when you get it on a big yeah. open canvas, it just goes wherever you want. So <clears throat> I think I'm going to have him make me another one for the reef too, for, for bigger days. So, and what, what is a bigger reef board? Like, uh, it's just heavier and narrower. So it's going to be narrow. It's going to be heavier. Um, you can do different things with rocker configuration, but basically the weight, the weight is the big thing yeah. that will, that will be different. Um, you need lots of weight when you're out there on the reef, when you're, you just need more weight to be able to, you know, go against gravity and get down the face of big waves. Yeah. You're not, since you're not paddling, you don't have to worry about any of that. It's all just planing. Yeah. Is that right? Just yep. planing and getting yep. up on the, you guys get so many more waves towing. Yes. You get, get a lot more work done in a short amount of time. <laughs> Didn't you say it kind of almost makes normal surfing kind of like, like it's not as exciting because you, you take so much longer to get a wave. I mean, it's just, it's just different. I mean, there's a lot of, there's a lot of work that goes into, you know, from the gas it costs to put in the ski to the knowledge that you need to be able to drive it safely and, and put people into waves and, you know, then all the cleanup after as well. And, you know, it's, it's, and it's you do not it all. A, yeah. And it's not a, it's not an individual thing. Like you could take the best surfer in the world and you could drive for them and they're not going to get a wave because you don't have any experience driving. So if you don't have a really good driver, like yeah. it doesn't matter how good the surfer is sometimes. Um, so it's really a team sport. You know, there's a whole team aspect to that. And yeah, uh, actually I think it'd be cool to talk about that. Oh, yeah. I he's got it. I've got the images oh, up yeah. right, right here. Like, let's take a look. Tell us, okay. Which one is this there? Like, <laughs> well, so this is on South reef. Like I said on that day and can you um, blow it up bigger, blow it up bigger, I'm... double click on it. Yeah. And then, and then that's the other picture right there, but you can, you can see that's me in the middle of the wave and it's, uh, it's overhead. Um, <laughs> and yeah. like I said, it was just, I was actually probably riding the wrong board that day. I was Full on, I was on a five and a half foot board and it was, uh, it was just chattering. I needed a, I needed a, a different board that was a little narrower out there, even though it looks real smooth and glassy. Um, wow, you definitely had to do that. That wave is so tall right there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I kind of sent them both. Cause I, I, I don't know if that's the same wave. I got, a, I got a couple waves like that, that day that were on a couple of the sets that were just exceptionally bigger than everything else coming through. But, um, but I just remember like you were so ultra focused cause like you did not want to fall. Like I, I, the last thing, like I didn't, I didn't, I didn't wreck on that wave. I made it and I did not want to fall cause it was like the amount of water and energy that would have mowed me down would have been like, you just never know what's going to happen in those situations. Like, you know, whether yeah. it's an injury or, you know, there's just so many, so many things that can happen when you're out in a big ocean like that. So, but that's, that's still to this day, that's the biggest, the biggest ocean that I've ever been in with regards to wave size for sure. So I don't know if we'll, if I'll ever get to experience that again or not, but, um, but that's that was crazy. That was very memorable for sure. So, <laughs> yeah. So uh, you were talking about teamwork, right? So I wanted to know, like, what's the story? Like, how did you meet Dan? Cause Dan came in from Ohio. Yep. So he, he was already living here. And so I actually, I actually met, um, Dan and my wife Asia on the same day at the rogue surf contest. Oh, so we met on the same day and like, you know, it's just kind of one of those things that, uh, that was an awesome moment in my life. And, um, but yeah, specifically with Dan, um, since you're talking, since you're asking questions about him, he, uh, you know, we hit it off right away and started hanging out and surfing together. And, you know, I don't remember how long it was like a week, a month, two months. I don't know. And he's like, man, I've, I've always wanted to get a ski. And like in his mind, he like, I want to get a ski just so like when it's eight foot or bigger, like you can go out to all these beach breaks that we have here and get out there. Yeah. Cause otherwise you can't like, you can't paddle out at Moolock when it's eight foot, you'll never make it, uh, yeah. you know, or whatever yeah. beach you want to mention, you know? Yeah. Um, 
And so unless there's a rip or a jetty or some kind of a headland, like, and even then sometimes you're still not going to get out if the rip's not working right. Yeah. Um, yeah. so, so anyway, long story short, um, I'm like, dude, my, my dad's got a Jerry Lopez tow board, you know, yeah. like, let's do this. And that's kind of how the seed was planted. And, you know, sure enough, within a, within a couple of weeks or a month, you know, he went and got a ski and then I got the tow board from my dad who my dad had purchased it a few, few years before that. In fact, I still have that board. It's pretty like, it's got the awesome Jerry Lopez airbrush on it. And it's a, it's definitely a wall hanger. I don't know if I'll surf on it again or not, but, um, I think that board was made in 97 actually. And so that was kind of like right when it was kind of first starting, you know, oh, dude. and, uh, and yeah, so that's how we started and that's what got us going and got us there. And then right away we realized, well, shoot, we want it. Like, let's try another board. And we got another tow board and we kept, you know, getting different, different boards throughout either from, from sponsors or, or having local shapers make them. Um, and so, but that was kind of how the seed was planted and how we, how we started that. It was kind of funny. Like neither one of us were like, dude let's, let's try to surf the biggest waves of our life. Like yeah. we were just like wanted to go out and surf these awesome waves that we see all the time that we could never access. Yeah. Yeah. And then like every time we went out, we're like, man, I wish it was bigger, man. I wish it was bigger. <laughs> like every time we went out, it was just always the same. Like, man, I wish it was bigger. And like, and that was just kind of something that, uh, that happened throughout the process. Um, and then, you know, we really, you know, in the, in the, not, you know, within the first year or two, like we started taking training really seriously too. And we started really preparing to surf big waves, um, and doing a variety of things, whether it was, you know, swimming in the pool underwater with like a 45 pound weight, um, and doing a lot of different breath holding exercises and doing things to prepare us to be underwater and feel comfortable and, and not panic. Um, and so, you know, we took, took our training seriously and we just kept, you know, Dan and I are, it's almost like in a sense, we do the same thing that my brother Lars and I have done is we just push each other. And, you know, we're always competitive with each other. So it, so it's a good, it's a good feeling to like, you always have that person there kind of pushing you to, to, you know, one more rep or one more wave or one more, you know, you can, you can do it kind of thing. And so that, that helped. And yeah, Dan's you know, last barrel, I remember you yelling at him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, yeah, I always, you know, it's just, it's just kind of that, that fun competitiveness, you know, that you have with, with someone that, you know, you're watching over their back, but you also want them to push themselves because they know they're capable of doing it. So, um, so yeah, it was, it was a good balance too. You know, I'm kind of more of like the detail person and he's kind of more of the big picture person. Yeah. So we kind of balance each other really well, um, with regards to like, we both wanted the same thing in the end, um, with regards to going out. Cause that's another thing we've, we've seen multiple people like you know, partner up and like one person wants one type of wave and the other person wants another type. Um, and like that doesn't mesh well when you're out in the ocean and waves of consequence, like yeah, you need to have yeah. two people that want the same thing. Yeah. Um, that are after the same goal. Well, kind of so. like Eric when he's out there <laughs> yeah. and he's a goofy footer yep. and he just keeps throwing you on all the lefts. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, dude, did you see that? Right. He's like, dude, the left, the left. <laughs> <laughs> that guy's awesome dude he just got a new ski i know you helped him put it together didn't you yeah, what, yeah did he, you go up there did he come down here uh no he dropped it off with me and i i did a full bow to stern hsa install on it and uh that thing is well it's probably the nicest ski globally in the world period and it's got speakers on it right oh my god the speakers are so loud like, <laughs> i was thinking at first i'm like dude why'd you get it and then I went and broke it in for him on yeah, the lake. I yeah. went up to the lake and drove around and had the music going. It's like got Bluetooth plugins to your oh, phone, no like way. in the in the middle console. And I'm like, dude, this is awesome. <laughs> you guys, so, you guys, is it? Is, you think it would be unsafe to have it blaring while you guys are toe surfing? No, or? it'll just get you pumped up. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah like play your favorite thing. rock yeah. music or whatever, and like you'll Metallica. totally, yeah, whatever, whatever uh, gets you motivated yeah. to push yourself. Like it's it's going to be awesome out there. So. <laughs> Um, oh, but yeah, the, awesome. the, the install on that ski is just amazing. You know, it's got all the HSA gear on it from bow to stern and it just, it, it, um, and, and I, I named it and he's got, he bought stickers for it, but it's Whoa. called the cherry bomb. <laughs> so it literally is it, like, when you see it, it yeah. just, it just like, wow, it's just a cherry bomb. head turner. Yeah. That's a cherry bomb. Oh, so, man. so I bet you'll be riding in that ski a lot this, uh, this winter. Hopefully, like I said, the key is staying healthy and not getting injured. He says his knee's good. He was out yep. doing whatever. I don't know what he was doing. Maybe yeah. riding around on the ski or something. But <laughs> yeah, well, that's even for me. Like I look back two winters ago and I felt like I'd done everything. I was prepared and then boom, injured, like out all winter two that years ago. So, How is it? 
How's your yeah, knee? I feel great. But you know, it was, it was six months recovery for, uh, until I was like able to do everything again. So, wow. cause I remember you came out, you were on the beach. You're yeah. Like, and I was like limping. I'm like, ah, oh. <laughs> yeah. Bad pain. That yeah. wave just like, what happened? I, I, I was filming the wave. I have the yep. wave somewhere. Yeah. And it, it did just like, well, I thought I, I thought I was low enough and I didn't think the lip was going to hit me. And, and what happened was, is I, I kind of was going sideways and I should have been pointed down the wave Yeah, and the lip just, it, even though I didn't have straps on it, just the, the thickness and the weight of the lip hit me so hard and so fast in the back of my knee on my back leg that it, my foot stayed on the board and my knee went forward and it just like instant pain. Like I was screaming underwater kind of pain. Oof. And it was just like, I knew I, I knew I messed something up and, you know, I was kind of surprised that when I got to the beach, I was actually able to walk on it. Cause I was limping pretty good when I found my board on the beach. And then, you know, I went back out and I'm like, yeah, I'm done. And then I kind of sat on it a little bit and drove a little bit cause it didn't hurt to sit down. Yeah. But we cut the session pretty short after that. Cause I knew like, I, I better go back and ice and, and like put my leg up cause I'm done <laughs> for a while. <laughs> It's kind of amazing you guys don't get hurt that much. Actually, with big wave surfing in general, it seems like there's not that many people that die anymore, or not that many people that get really hurt. Yeah, I mean, there's been a lot of advancements in safety that are that's making it as safe as it's ever been. But I mean, it's still one of those things like you got to rely on your own training and and the people around you, and know that you know, whatever happens that you're prepared for that situation. So yeah, with, with all the stuff, like with Nazare, when Nazare goes off, it's like everywhere on social media and they're like, Oh, look at that ski. <sighs> Just like the ski yeah. gets pummeled or yep. Kyle, Lenny will take all these bombs on the head at, at the giant 80 footers on yeah. the head. Like, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> yeah, I well, pretty much everyone wears a inflatable vest now. So they have the inflatable vest and they have better protocols in place to rescue people out of the impact zone. Um, and there's a, there's a variety of factors that have gone into that. You know, the, the one thing that I did, um, during COVID too, is I, you know, cause the in class, the in-person classes shut down, but the brag, the big wave risk assessment group that was started, um, a while back, you know, they're doing a really, really great job at educating not only surfers, but just anyone that is near the water and the ocean that wants better training so that when, when, and if something happens, they're prepared for it. Um, you know, whether it's a cardiac arrest victim that's already on the beach or whether it's somebody in trouble in the water and, and like, how do you handle, how do you assess that situation and know that you're making the right choice, not only for yourself and your own safety, but for their safety as well. So they've, they've done a phenomenal job. They actually have an online program that you can, that you can pay for and you can watch all the videos if you can't attend the in-person ones. Um, so I think companies like that are doing a great job of, of putting that out there to everybody that wants it. Um, to help educate more people about safety. Yeah, that's huge. I mean, and and a big part of that too, right, is that that you and your your partner are on the same page too. Like mm-hmm. you're saying, right? For you guys sure. watch out for each other. Those that really good teamwork, and then you guys are out there saving other people. Yeah, sometimes sometimes you're like forced to go into action mode when something bad happens, and and yeah, now you're now you're you're helping other people out to make sure that they they come home safe as well. <clears throat> oh man driving a ski seems like so much fun it is <laughs> i'm not gonna lie <laughs> and you guys out there and then I, you guys jump it like I, it seems like you try not to jump it too much yeah. like maybe that's why i don't know why that's bad but like you'll crash well, it's or... just hard on equipment it's hard on your body it's it's hard on everything when you're when you're catching air so ideally you know your ski never leaves the water but yeah. It's not a matter of if it's a matter of when, and, and your ski is going to leave the water at some point. You're going to, you're going to be in the wrong spot and you're going to be going too fast and you're going to launch. <laughs> so, I mean, that's what I'd be doing all day, man. Yeah. You know, let's see how far. I... Yeah. So like I just, I was, I put a little clip when I, I posted a little video on the, my Instagram, I put a little clip and I was looking through and like one of them you had. I think you had Jeff on the back and like the guy in the back, I feel bad for them when you jump because <laughs> yeah. you were all the way out. Yeah. You know, you must've been two or three feet above the, yeah. And above you, the you can see the guy on the back, his legs like go flying way up in the air. So, you know, you're like, you're launching cause they're like holding on to the rescue sled. <laughs> yeah. And that's the other thing is, is you'll get tired and sore just from hanging on to the rescue oh, sled. Yeah. Like not even getting pulled up out of the water. But if, if, if like I were to take you out tomorrow and like 10 foot surf and you're yeah. just, Hey, I'm going to drive around for yeah. 20 minutes with you holding on to the rescue sled. Like you'd be sore just from that. Oh. Cause it's, it's a beating back there sometimes. Oh man. <clears throat> Being out there is just, it's, it's, it's an incredible experience. There's like skydiving. There's like scuba diving. There's like not other things that aren't diving, you know, like mountain biking, crazy extreme sports but like that for for me was like because i'd been skydiving 
that for me was on this whole other level, like with a ski, you know, and, and then you're out there and it's like, you're way out there. Nice sound effects. <laughs> I've, I've listened a lot <laughs> and it's like, holy crap, you know, like I kind of had a little bit of the, I'm going to jump out of the plane feeling, you know, like I'm going to actually surf this, you know, like yeah. kind of feeling. Cause like they're, you know, we're out here like, what if a big wave comes? And I'm kind of like, uh, you know, I'm like, <laughs> you know, I kind of reach my limit, you know, like. I mean, with a ski, it's different too, because you could take anybody out and if they're willing, they'll, you can pull them into a wave and if they got the vest, they'll probably be fine. Right. If they're, you know, competent, yeah, most, most likely, but, <laughs> but you're not in charge out there. The ocean is <laughs> yeah, the ocean. mother nature always has the last say, oh, no matter dude. what you think or believe, it doesn't matter how big or small it is. <laughs> Yeah. So, but the thing I love the most about you is you get just as excited when you lose a drone filming people surfing or big waves than I do when I get a really good wave. You're like, dude, I lost my first drone yeah. today. <laughs> and I'm like, what is wrong with you? You yeah. just lost a thousand dollars. I mean, there's definitely kind of like a sucky part of it, but it's like, now I'm legit. Now yeah. I'm like a scar. <laughs> yeah. yeah it's like you your battle scar. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know, and I've lost a uh, empty drone. Case. I think, um, two drones three pretty, gopros pretty soon you won't be able to count them all in one hand <laughs> yeah i only got I my hands full yep i don't know i'm trying not to lose any drones but it's always something stupid do when you lose a drone one yeah. it just disappears and the other one i was just hovering and then uh you know i, I don't know what happened out there but it just got swallowed yeah. i wasn't even doing anything i just didn't look for a second and i was I actually could see underwater really yeah i could, see, split yeah, I, could. I was like did oh. you get to save that footage or no no you know like they, there's only so much your phone will hold and then it'll yeah. stop recording but yeah i saw underwater and i if anybody finds a drone with uh silver painted on it <laughs> nobody's gonna find that thing <laughs> i always thought like you know when i lose a gopro i'm like maybe somebody will bring it back to me they'll figure out who i am they'll be like look at this yeah you never know <laughs> Only on YouTube. Bring it back like 10 years later. Look at this bozo. Look yeah. at what he's doing. I mean, if you think about some of the surfboards that have been lost out at sea and then somebody finds it. And they Wait, find what? It. People, that happens? Yeah, like even even at the Nell Scott contest, somebody yeah. lost their board and it got washed away and it like turned up like two weeks later, like up in Astoria or something. Oh, oh no way. So, I That's... mean, I lost a board once surfing down in Coos Bay and it got sucked out between <clears throat> the jetties and a, a fishing boat found it and we got it back like a couple days later. You had your name on it? No. How, no, how we just, my dad just went down and started asking around if anybody had found a surfboard. Oh, and, wow. What uh, a smart dude. Yeah. Like he really knows. Yeah. So, cause fishermen know that's their <laughs> job is to be on the water out in the ocean. <laughs> fishermen. They do. Oh, about eight o'clock. How are we doing? How are you feeling, man? I'm feeling all right, but I don't know what else you got up your sleeve or how long this goes, but I mean, we go, we can go for three hours, but that's the max. <sighs> Okay, I'd it, say that's the max. I thought this was an hour, so we're at a solid hour and a half so far. Oh, that's that's you know, that's pretty good. Yeah, I'm I'm feeling pretty good. Are you feeling pretty I'm feeling good? Feeling pretty good. Yeah, yeah. I think that was a little little bonus half hour. Then, I mean, we really just like minimum hour. We go however long, but yeah. like, I feel like we got a good solid. Yeah, but if, solid you, don't, cast. if you don't have anything else to uh, talk about, I'm I'm good to get on with the rest of my evening, but. Well, you're you a got busy some guy. more pressing questions and let me know. I could actually look at my list. <laughs> yeah, you haven't looked at that thing once. No, after I'd, telling me you got 20, he, 20 it, things No, he, to he goes me. free after one question yep. on the list. <laughs> after that, it's just like, what was it we were talking about the other day? Um, the stuffed animal thing. The gnome. The gnomes. Shooting, yeah. the hip, shooting from the hip is what you do. <laughs> no, well, this kid, actually, we, we, I, I actually do have a pretty good idea of what's on the list. And you were just knocking out a bunch of the questions yeah. when you were talking. And uh, and then I do shoot from the hip. I mean, I like, because you'll talk about something. Yeah. And I'll be like, oh, I want to know about that. Because I'm just yeah. like a curious guy, you know? Exactly. And, uh, you know, we kind of talked about everything. Oh, kayak. Oh, yeah. Okay, oh, here's a good yeah. one. Mm, <laughs> it's the last question. Okay. Last question. <laughs> that's, but, like, that's, like, that's like saying... Just one more wave. Oh, dude. <laughs> How many times have you paddled back out after you said just one more? Definitely definitely done that. And then also, all of a sudden, it's really hard to get a wave. Yeah. Yeah. And then you sit there for 20 minutes. You're like, dang it. I should have went in. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's that's it's like a thing. Yep. Uh, but yeah, I just I guess it's just like a future question. It's like, where do you go from here? You know, like, so you're going to be a boating guy for a while or whatever. Yeah. And then, oh, so actually, screw that question. Never mind that. That's a dumb question. <laughs> I remembered another one, the one I forgot earlier. Okay. The one I what's, forgot what's earlier. That one? Okay, yeah. Where are you gonna go surf next? 
You know, because you, you know, you've been all these other places now. What's next? Are you going to cloud break? Are you, you, you going to go? Where are you going to go? So, uh, well, yeah, and if my wife's listening right now, that could be interesting. Uh-oh. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but, but no, uh, so so my friend Jeff Thomas, um, yeah. who owns the Brewski, yeah. um, he and I have been, he's been there once, but we've been talking to going to Fiji and going to cloud break. <sighs> Oh, I just said cloud break. Yeah. Did I just get that? Like I totally and, just was like threw that out there. And but but we've been talking about it. I don't I don't think it's gonna happen right away because he has he has two young kids. Yeah. So um That's also where Chopu so is. Yes, it is. But we weren't we wouldn't be going there for that, I don't think. We'd be going there to surf cloud Yeah, but break. what if what if cloud break was great and you had like a day to you know I mean, I wouldn't probably turn it down, <laughs> dude. <laughs> Depending on how big it is, but I mean, that's such a perfect wave. Like, yeah, as long as you're good at making really steep drops, and I mean, you kind of have some practice. I've I've had some practice, yeah. And then, have you seen it on smaller days? I had no idea. Yeah. Recently, I saw it. it's like the same thing, yeah, but just smaller, but just smaller. Yeah. yeah, like what the heck? That's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, but it's all about how, you know, how much you like surfing over shallow reefs is what you, you know, if you don't like surfing over shallow reefs then don't go there. Have you read uh, Susan Casey's The Wave? Uh, I don't know if I've, I think I've read parts of it. I don't know if I've finished that book though. Yeah, that was, that was a good book. And she talks about that. It's like kind of the beginning, you know, like a, yeah. a big wave surfing. And she talks about like Garrett McNamara and like the guy who runs um, either Magic Seaweed or Surfline or something. Okay. Anyway, and then Laird Hamilton and all that. Okay. And then uh, she's like, they, you know, talking up about the Chopu and how some chick got her face ripped off on the reef. And uh, that was my like yeah. understanding. Like, yeah. and like, what like, is that? Literally like oh. gone. <laughs> Can you imagine? No. I yeah. mean, I tried to, and I started thinking weird things in my head. Like, oh, yeah. you know, it's like, yeah. I need to rip somebody's face off. <laughs> and so it doesn't sound like a place I'd want to surf. I don't think uh, I probably I probably would just choke and not even take I'd just die. Yeah, I mean I I remember my first trip to Indonesia uh, back in two thousand one, and like when you're surfing in really clear water like that over a sh- over a reef that actually may not even be that shallow, it looks like it's six inches below. Oh when really? You're riding over it and it just like if you look down, it freaks you out because like the reef is right there. Yeah. Because the water's so clear. Yeah. So it can be, it can be really deceiving when you're on a wave and looking, if you look actually down underneath your board, like under the water. Yeah. Um, and it can make it always seem, it always seems way shallower than it is. Oh, but, but I've yeah. never surfed anywhere like that. I've never surfed in Hawaii. My, I, my grandmother's from Okinawa, Japan though. And it's okay. like Hawaii. And I hear there is some shallow, shallow. Well, and I used there. to think the wa- I mean, the water in Hawaii is definitely clear, but man, when I, when I went to Indo in 2001, like that was the clearest, I mean, you could see for like, it felt like what was miles underneath, like when I went snorkeling and really, I mean, you could just see forever. It was just crazy. So, yeah, I got to experience that. I haven't experienced surfing in warm water. I surfed in a Southern Cal once. You've and- never surfed in warm water? No, dude, you got to get out more. I'm Oregon <laughs> surfer. Blood. You should be down with Bradley right now. In I Mexico. should be. <laughs> I just keep, and Dan keeps inviting me to go to Costa Rica and I keep spending all my money and all this kind of stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Go buy another camera. <laughs> no, I got to stop buying cameras. It's like, a, it's like a bad addiction. Yeah. No, I, I need to go to Costa Rica. I got my new passport. I got, I look like a terrorist. <laughs> It's bad. Like I get this big beard and I woke up, you know, I like work a 24 hour shift. My hair is all messed up and I look like I'm, I'm, I'm just kind of hoping it works still. Yeah. You're probably getting patted down at the airport. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a good guy. I got a clean record. I got to get my driver's license redone. And I'm thinking like, maybe I should kind of let it grow out a little more. So it matches. No, you need to get a passport is what you need. Oh, I have a passport. Okay. No, I just mean, you know, the, oh, gotcha. so the ma- I don't know if they need to look at both, I guess. Do you have the new ID? <laughs> No, because you can just use your passport. That's what I was thinking. And then my friends were like, oh, you know, like, because I was going to save like 30 bucks. And they're like, it's nickel nickel and diamond, but I can just use my passport. Yeah, exactly. I'm just going to wait for my license to expire when I have to get another one. And then you'll, you'll have to get the, the, whatever they call it, the real ID or whatever it's called. Yeah, that's what they call it. Oh, mine is going to expire. So maybe I should. (laughs) Just just wait until your license expires and then you'll have to get it anyway, I think. I think all the new ones coming out, if you get a license, you have to get the real ID no. kind, don't you? No, I was talking no, to the DMV guy. They give like, you an option. Oh, yeah, really? Yeah, you can get, you can, it's like double the money to buy the real ID. Oh, I, I think see. it's 60 and 90. Because it's got like a chip or something in it. It's got some kind of data in it. I don't it. know, dude. I just, I'm, a che- I'm a cheap ass. I'm like, yeah. I don't want to give you extra money. I got my passport. <laughs> <laughs> all right, man. I think we're good. I think we're out of, I think we're, uh, out of steam here. 
Right on. Dayton's got the the sequence, and Ollie Richardson, thanks for coming on. You're the yeah, man. Buddy. Stay stoked. Uh, you can follow Ollie. He's on Instagram, uh, real underscore deal underscore Richardson. And uh, I don't know if he goes on much, but he's there. You can see some of his cool shit there. And uh, talk to us, Munster. Next week, we're going to have Celeste McEntee. Nice. You know Celeste? You ever met yes. her? Yeah, I actually ran into her yesterday. Yeah, she'll be on next week. <laughs> cool. <laughs> All right, man. Have a good night, everybody. Right on. All right. Stay good stoked. night, everyone. See ya.